today in Professor's Garage. We're replacing the engine coolant on this Toyota Sienna with the 2GR FE engine. This is the job that often gets overlooked by its key to engine health. Let's do it right with Toyota Super Long Life Coolant or the Asian coolant. The pink coolants are equivalent. This vehicle belongs to a family friend. They bought it used At 150,000 miles, the service history shows that this vehicle has enjoyed regular oil change every 5,000 miles, which is great. This is the 2GR FE engine, a great V6 engine by Toyota. But there's no record of transmission fluid replacement, no brake fluid or ABS fluid service. And there's no record either for the engine coolant replacement. Wow, I wonder whose home is this? Wow. When replacing coolant on this engine, there are four locations to pay attention to, plus one. The first, the pickup from the front bumper between the radiator fan and the engine you can see the pecock right there or yellow cap that's where you drain coolant this is the first location the second location is where you fill the coolant which is the radiator cap if the engine is warm you do not want to open this cap drain the coolant from the pecock before you open the radiator cap so this is where you fill the coolant. Now during the bleeding process, you're going to use a funnel, a non-spill funnel, to do the bleeding process. Now, on this particular engine, there's a bleeder valve in the back of the engine, right here. And this is the valve that you are going to open during the bleeding process, because if you don't do that, the air can be trapped in the engine block, and it's very difficult to get it out. So this is the valve from which you are going to redirect the air using a clear tube to the final. So this is the third important location you want to pay attention to, the bleeder valve on the engine block. The fourth location is the reservoir, the coolant reservoir or expansion tank. After you have bleeded the whole system, right, you want to check the level here at to max if the level in here is low. So that is the fourth location. Plus one, because there's also one additional place to join coolant on the engine block, which is down there. So these are the locations you need to pay attention to, to replace engine coolant. You know, coolant looks beautiful. <laughs> the bottle looks pink. It's nice, but they are actually very toxic. So when joining coolant, I don't like splashing everywhere because it's never good for the environment. To redirect the coolant, I actually place a funnel under the pecock. There's a better method to plug a clear tube under the pecock, but I do not have the right size here. So what I do here is to place a funnel under it, which goes through the undershield. These undershields are loose, and then you can either place a bottle to collect it, or simply just a catch pan. This will collect one gallon, and if it's more than that, I can turn off the pickup from above to stop the flow. By the way, there's no need to raise the vehicle. There's enough clearance to place a catch pan to collect coolant. Open the pickup from above. Yes, we'll let it join. Let's take a look. Now with the pack up open and the pressure in the system released, now you can actually consider open the cap, okay? Because there's no longer pressure in there. Still, I want to be careful, but I don't think there's any pressure. Okay, it's done joining. Turn off the pack up. 
This doesn't require a lot of torque, so just finger tight. Should be good. Yeah, good. Okay, clean. No splash at all. But this is will be about one gallon out, and we are going to probably put one gallon in. Now the coolant has been joined. We are going to fill coolant from the radiator cap, bleed the system so that air will get out. If you have air in the system, you are in big trouble because the engine can overheat. A big helper is a non-spill funnel, and this is a kit from Thorstone. And what I really like about this kit is that this funnel is clear, so you can see the amount of coolant right from here. Okay, so it's easier to monitor the level. And inside this kit, it has a number of adapters. So let's see. And there must be one for Toyota. Let me show you the one. And you can compare, you know, the cap to the Toyota cap to see which one is actually what you need. I think it's this one. Okay. Yep. So this is the right one for the cap. And then we need an adapter to go in here and seal it. Okay. This adapter C. Good fit. This latch is a little bit too tight, so I pry it a little bit and now it fits. Yep, this creates a very tight seal. Then you can fit the final here. And of course, at the end of it, once it's done, right, and you need to remove the coolant final from it, you can plug this in and lift this up. Now I'm going to remove the plug and we'll put coolant in, in it. Now we are going to loosen the bleeder valve 10 millimeter. And we are going to connect a clear tube. And then connect it to the funnel. Make sure this is clear and clean. So let me show you the setup. This is the bleeder valve loosened, and then air will come out from here to the clear tube and get out of here. Now that's fill coolant. Do it slowly. You see the coolant is coming out from there. Let's fill a little bit more. This is good level because we don't want to overfill this in the funnel. There's lots of air in the system. During the bleeding, this actually will rise up. So I don't want this to overfill and overflow and you are going to create a lot of mess. Okay, so I think this is for now good. And we are going to start the engine and wrap up to at least 2,000, 2,500 RPM and then keep the steady RPM there. Turn heat to max, fan off. The temperature of the engine is going to rise and it's going to circulate air and try to get the air out from the bleeder. That's the idea. Okay, make sure you have a tight seal, right? So you don't want coolant to get out during the bleeding process. Okay, start the engine. You will see from the bleeder valve on steady flow. You continue to wrap up to 2500 RPM and this will continue for a while until there is a steady coolant coming out of the bleeder valve. Okay, at that point the whole system is bleeding. Let's continue to wrap up the engine. For coolant bleeding, you need to wrap up your engine to a certain RPM. 
Alright, so this is just a ratchet or breaker bar with an extension as you can see. Press this tool against the seat and then the other side, the end of the socket will press the gas pedal and then what you can do is that you can adjust the seat forward, backward so you can wrap up the RPM. In the end, I was able to set it a little bit above 2000 RPM. Two thousand RPM. You can see now the bubble coming out from the bigger valve. Cooling has gone up a little bit. We'll let it continue its process until there is a steady flow coming out of the bleeder valve. Lots of air bubble. I can look like this steady full end. Your bubble in the final. The full end is steady here. This took a few minutes. Air bubbles inside the final have also stopped. Still some air bubbles in there, but I think it's going to become steady very soon. So finally, there is a steady flow, steady output of full end from the printer valve. So it looks like we are very close to the end. So now we already see a steady flow and just tiny bubbles coming out. We can close the bleeder valve at this point. Steady flow, as you can tell here. Right, you can continue right here. Very good. And you see there's no more air bubble coming out. So what I'm going to do is to use this 10 millimeter wrench to close the valve. Uh, the engine is very hard, so be careful. So it's tightened. We'll talk it later. And now I'm going to remove this. Uh, it's going to create some spill. All oh, this will go to the final. So now it's okay uh, to let the idle slow down. And the coolant will go down a little bit. Better to talk it to stack when it's cold, but right now I just want you to tighten it. It's 9 pound feet of torque, or 108 inch pound. Good. Shut off the engine and clean up everything. Now, fill the coolant reservoir. No spill kit also includes a small funnel. Perfect for the coolant reservoir. So fill it up all the way to max. Excellent. Okay, now plug the no spill funnel and we're going to remove it. And we'll simply put this coolant level at max, which is great. Now remove the adapter cap and the adapter. Now to pop it off. Oh, good. We are going to recheck coolant level tomorrow and add more if necessary. When the engine cool down, it's going to suck coolant from the tank here. Remember the tank was full, right? We added coolant to make it to the full line, but after a night, the engine has cooled down, right? So it sucks coolant from 
the reservoir from the expansion tank. So right now it's low on coolant and we are going to add more to the expansion tank. Now it's at the full line. In the next few days, monitor the coolant level and temperature. But we are all done here. That's how you replace and bleed the coolant properly on this 2GR FKS engine. And there's no spill whatsoever from the bleeder valve from the radiator cap. It's a job well done. It also gives you peace of mind because coolant, even though it's super long life, it doesn't last forever and it's super important for the health of your engine to have the coolant effective. Passenger side wheel, oil pan here, transmission or transaxle. The axle going into the or transmission. This is where you drain the coolant. If you plug a clear hose, you can drain from here, but you need to open this screw, which is a 10 millimeter screw. You open this 10 millimeter screw, and then you can drain coolant from here, just a small amount from here up to your radiator. If you want to do it, that's great. On this uh, front wheel drive, it's not a problem. It's easy, but sometimes this can get seized depending on where you are. Okay, so just be cautious with that. On an all-wheel drive, imagine transfer case, the drive shaft in the way. So you have to go from behind and perhaps use a long extension to reach it. Again, you don't have to drain from here. It's just a small amount. You can always make up for it by replacing the coolant more frequently. Initial replacement at 100,000 miles and then you can continue with a service every 50k. Every time you replace about a gallon and that's enough to renew the coolant and to keep the engine cool. I hope this video is informative. If you found this tutorial helpful, consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribing to Professor's Garage. If Professor can do it, you can do it. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and give you peace. Ping an.